You guys loved yesterday's Fall of X video, so let's cover the Iron Man prelude where he fights a 50 foot tall X-Men Buster suit. And the question's gotta be asked, why is he fighting an Iron Man Sentinel designed to kill mutants? Okay, wind the clock back because this is the fault of both a guy named Phalong and Tony Stark himself. So this opens up with Tony Stark in his brownstone apartment and by all standards of measurement, he's basically broke. Why? Because in a story leading up to this, Tony Stark had tracked down what was called source control. It was basically a black market arms dealer organization, but in order to ensure that those arms and armament couldn't be sold out on the open market, he ended up using most of his money to buy it all up and then dismantle it. What little money he has left is about to disappear because while he's in this brownstone, somebody sabotaged his arc reactor and blows the whole place to pieces. Not only that, it kills his neighbor. So now his entire reputation is tarnished. Not only that, when he meets with Jennifer Walter She-Hulk, who's kind of the lawyer for the superhero community, she initially tells him that the family of the woman is suing him, but so are a whole bunch of people who claim to be around the building or in the building, and they're all mostly frivolous lawsuits. And while it would take a lot of time to sort through it all, and she could basically reduce things down to where he's only being sued by the woman of the family, not only that, he's also being sued by all these people who are basically basically filing frivolous lawsuits. But in effort to make it all go away, he takes what little money he has left and just tells Jennifer Walters, pay them all off. So now he has basically nothing. And so he ends up basically taking up residence inside of just some old mechanics shop. And like, that's it. But the big question that has to be asked here is who did this? Who caused this in the first place? Well, for the most part, any lead out there is virtually non-existent. And the best thing he has to go on is some random villain out there who just starts launching an attack. Tony Stark's able to defeat this guy, but when he rips his mask off, he realizes it's a guy who has been kidnapped and has been missing for two days. The problem with this is he takes a momentary reprieve to go to his Alcoholics Anonymous meeting because Tony Stark's an alcoholic in the comics, but then he passes out only to wake up in Hell's Kitchen, New York. Now he is rescued by Riri Williams and between the two of them, they start talking over what's going on, who's coming after Tony Stark. And she agrees almost wholeheartedly, Tony didn't blow up his own brownstone and whoever this villain is that's operating behind the scenes certainly has some kind of vendetta for him. But then the living laser just kind of a appears out of nowhere and starts attacking the city. Now, the Living Laser has historically been a minor villain of Tony Stark, not the most important character there ever was, but he is important to this story. And the reason why is because he claims Tony Stark came after him, attacked him, subdued him, and then started experimenting on him. Now, Stark has no clue what he's talking about, right? He's like, I have not seen you in forever, and while you are certainly a villain that should be taken seriously, kind of, sometimes, I guess, I'm not the guy who kidnapped you. But as far as a living laser is concerned, it's true. Tony Stark went after him. Now, at this point in time in Marvel Comics, Riri Williams has the 10 rings of the Mandarin. And while they do have, or at least grant her a variety of powers for the sake of this discussion, one of the things it does is it allows her to read and project the mind of the living laser. And when she projects his own memories out to Tony Stark for him to see, and even for her to see, they come to the realization, Tony Stark really did come after him. He really did attack him, but it wasn't actually Tony Stark. It was someone who looked like Tony Stark. And so following this, we pick up with what appears to be the assassination of a guy named Zong Wei. Who's Zong Wei? Zong Wei was at one point, and even to this day, still remained a friend of Tony Stark. He was brought on to Stark Industries relatively early. The two of them had been working together for an incredibly long time. Here's the kicker to all of this. When Tony Stark was kicked out of his own company due to the Brownstone explosion and lost all of his money between a combination of source control as well as paying all the people off who were suing him, basically Zong Wei had control of Stark Industries. He owned the most stock in the company and the buck stopped there. But with him being killed, now there's no one to run Stark Industries. And so jumping back to Tony Stark and his hunt for basically whoever it was that looks like him and went after him due to his intelligence intelligence, he figures out pretty fast it has to be a life model decoy. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that is in Marvel Comics, a life model decoy is basically either a full-on robot or an android that looks like another human being. Nick Fury used those things all the time, but Tony Stark realizes there's a life model decoy out there that's been designed to look like him and to basically go after certain people. When him and James Rhodes, who he'd contacted for help, when they track down where this life model decoy is located, this thing 
bust out of a holding facility, basically wearing Iron Man armor. And between the two of them, it's a full out knockdown brawl, right? I mean, literally, the building's getting demolished, the whole place is popping off. But Tony Stark stops him pretty fast, just because it's an Iron Man suit and he knows exactly how those things work. But when he freezes the suit and he rips the helmet off, his suspicions are confirmed it is a life model decoy. Now it does taunt him for a little bit and it's really speaking to him, but it's more like a recorded message. Somebody speaking through this life model decoy. It must be so strange for you to hear me speak with your own voice. You spared many lives by discovering this lab before I revealed it tomorrow. I'll admit you were so slow out of the gate that I was worried you'd be yet another boring disappointment. So basically, this person operating behind the scenes, controlling this life model decoy, taking these pot shots at Tony Stark and trying to destroy his life, they know who he is. So the question has to be asked, who in the world is it? Now, of course, shortly after revealing this gigantic message, the life model decoy effectively detonates and starts to explode. So of course, Tony Stark and James Rhodes have to get out of there as fast as they possibly can, only for us to switch over to the person who's actually behind all of this, which turns out to be a guy named Fei Long. So, sidetrack from this story for a second. Who in the world is Fei Long? So, Fei Long has historically been an X Men villain, and he's a relatively new addition to Marvel Comics. He's only been around for a couple years. But the idea behind Fei Long is that his origin ties directly into Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers from 2013, which is to say, during that storyline, Mars was terraformed by basically some people out there that we don't need to go into, and it was turned into a world that could become habitable. Fei Long basically led a human research group that would take this terraformed Mars and turn it into a place that humanity could colonize. Such as it was, all that went belly up when it was effectively abandoned. So all the money he had invested had basically just been thrown away, and he largely blamed the Avengers for it. Now where his follow-up was to travel back to Mars and simply just terraform the planet itself due to the fact that Fei Long's so incredibly intelligent, by that point in time, a portion of the mutant population on Earth had transitioned to Mars. Why does that matter? Because if you're following the X-Men comics, you know that the mutant population lives on Krakoa. They're their own country. So when some of them went to Mars, Mars became an extension of their own country. It would be like if the United States took over Cuba and Cuba became part of the USA. Russia couldn't just go there and launch a military invasion without sparking a war. And that's what would have happened if Fei Long had showed up to Mars and just started terraforming it. It'd be considered an invasion and an act of war. So all the money, all the time, all the resources he had invested was all for nothing. And so ever since then, he's largely been an enemy of the X-Men. The other kicker behind all this is Fei Long was responsible for the death of Zong Wei. Because when Zong Wei was killed, all the stock he owned in Stark Industries was dumped onto the open market which Fei Long immediately bought. And now he is the one that runs Stark Industries. Stark doesn't even run his own company anymore. And so it's one of the most methodical takeovers and attacks on a superhero that exists out there in Marvel Comics. It's amazing. But when Tony Stark confronts this guy, they're surrounded by people, cameras, everything. And where it takes every ounce of strength Tony Stark has not to kill this guy, at the end of the day, he's still able to keep himself calm to a degree, and even go so far as to say, I kind of admire your tenacity here. Guys like Obadiah Stane and Justin Hammer never would have had the gumption to pull off a stunt like this. So there is something to be said about your intelligence. Understand this though, if the cameras were not here and if they weren't surrounded by people, Tony Stark would probably beat this guy nearly to death. And in fact, he would kind of have to stop himself or somebody would have to step in. It's a full on vendetta because not only has Fei Long cost Tony Stark everything that's important to him, he even went after Stark's friends and family, which even Stark himself says that's something that Stane and Justin Hammer knew not to do. You don't trifle with the people who are close to me. And so where a fight breaks out between the two of them, Fei Long, fires off this massive energy blast from his own mouth. Now, the reason why he's able to do that is because he basically gave himself powers. That's one of the reasons why he's pink, but also why he has this ability. But for the most part, the fight between him and Stark, while it seems impressive, isn't really all that impressive. It's more just kind of a knockdown, drag out fist fight between the two. It's moderately interesting, but Tony Stark ultimately gets the upper hand on this guy, crushes his hand, literally breaks every single bone in his hand, and says, 
Here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna give you to the rest of the day, but you're gonna go out there into the world. You're gonna tell everybody what you've done, that you blew up my brownstone, that you went after the people that were closest to me, you killed my friend Zong. You are the one that orchestrated all of this because at this moment right now, the destruction of the brownstone, the death of Zong Wei from a repulsor blast to the chest, it's all being viewed as the actions of Tony Stark. He is effectively the most wanted man in the world right now. But if Fei Long comes out and reveals his actions and all of this, it exonerates Stark. Life can go as close to back to normal as it can be for a superhero on Earth, and then everything is more or less sorted out. Of course, Fei Long doesn't do any of that because he's a villain and he does what villains do. What's bigger than this though is that everything that is related to Stark Industries is the property of Fei Long. Every facility, every piece of armor, the whole nine yards. And so because all the Iron Man suits were manufactured under Stark Industries, which could basically make them a business write-off, now the Iron Man suits belong to Fei Long. On top of that, out in Texas, in a air hangar, right, where they store planes that belong to Stark Industries, Fei Long finds this great big huge cache of all these old recordings from Howard Stark that were made for Tony. Under normal circumstances, that wouldn't matter. For this story, it matters immensely, specifically with regards to the X-Men Buster suit. The reason for that and the reason why that suit's so powerful is that while we don't necessarily get the ins and outs of what happened, what we find out is somewhere along the line, Howard Stark was working alongside Adam Brashear, the Blue Marvel, one of the most intelligent and powerful beings in the entirety of Marvel Comics. And that between the two of them, they had discovered an element that did not exist on the periodic table. That element is revealed to Fei Long by Howard Stark, where in reality, it was simply just supposed to be revealed to Tony. But Fei Long uses this information and then starts bringing in all these metals from all over the world directly to this hangar. Now, Tony Stark picks up on this, and in fact, he starts scanning the manifests of Stark Industries to see if anything strange and wonky is happening. Because in his mind, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense that this guy, Fei Long, who's normally been a villain of the X-Men, would attack Tony Stark. Sure, Tony Stark's kind of a dick, but in reality, it doesn't warrant the wholesale destruction of his entire life. So something much bigger has to be going on here. Fei Long has to be after the resources of Stark, not Stark himself. And so by analyzing the import and export manifests of Stark Industries, Tony Stark realizes that all these metals have been moved to this hangar. And when he gets in there, he comes face to face with a 50 foot tall Sentinel imbued and built with Stark tech. And this Sentinel is powered by whatever this mysterious element happens to be. Now, make no mistake here, Sentinels in Marvel Comics are incredibly dangerous. In Days of Future Past, they took over North America, wiped out most all humans and superpower beings alike, and those who survived were either thrown in internment camps or living underground as a kind of resistance force. You're talking about a traditional Sentinel with that level of power that now has an accompaniment of Stark tech. That amplifies it even further. Not only that, Fei Long appears and then immediately overpowers Tony Stark, mostly because he doesn't have his own Iron Man suit. So he's just there in his normal human form, just kind of being kicked around, beat around, and that kind of a thing. Now, Fei Long does talk about this element that's been discovered by Howard that's being used in this suit, but he doesn't tell Tony Stark what it is. So we don't find out what it is. Suffice it to say, he says it is powerful enough that the X-Men and the mutant population are effectively donezo, right? These guys are over. And lest we forget, the most powerful powerful beings in Marvel Comics across the board are mutants, which means this Sentinel has to be equally powerful, or at least this army of Sentinels have to be comparable to the power of mutants across the world. And a full-on test of what this thing can do happens when Fei Long sends it after Tony Stark. He literally puts Stark in his own suit and says, I want you to be at your best when you see what this thing can do. And it absolutely annihilates Stark. This guy never had a chance, not one chance. Literally, Fei Long says, attack the intruder. And it immediately goes after Tony. And all Tony can do, firing off repulsor blasts left and right, which would normally be enough to take out any kind of robot out there, they just zing off this thing. It's almost as if it's bulletproof, right? It's incapable of being harmed by the power of Iron Man. So the best Tony can do is just 
flee for his life while Fei Long watches him fly away, all the while musing over the fact that if Iron Man couldn't stop him, what chance do the X-Men have? With that being said, guys, we'll be back next Wednesday with more Fall of X. If you guys need to get caught up, make sure you click this playlist, and I will catch you all later. Peace.